Hello, I'm Henry Hansen, and this is a side project from my PhD time at Loughborough University Sports Technology Institute. I was researching soccer football impact dynamics. We got a call from Mark Jones, scientist at the Mary Rose Trust, with an opportunity to collaborate on a special project. He was working on educational activities for the Mary Rose Museum in Portsmouth, England, and looking for a soccer or football scientist to help with another Tudor era artifact, the world's oldest known football. The ball was found in the rafters of Stirling Castle, probably stuck up there for 450 years. Stirling Smith Art Museum and Gallery usually has the ball, but Mark borrowed it and commissioned an accurate replica of the outer panels. I had the pleasure of finishing the replica by adding the inner parts and evaluating the ball in the lab. The outer panels of the ball were reproduced with vegetable tan leather and the interior was a pig bladder. A few calls to the local butchers and abattoirs and I found a place to get clean bladders for only 50 pence apiece. I bought four. I sought advice from the country's leading authority on pig bladder inflation, John O'Shea. John is an artist and has run some cool events for kids to create their own pig bladder balls, and he also exhibited some fascinating work on conceptual future of organic pig bladder footballs with cellular growth on a 3D printed scaffold. Hello and welcome to the pig bladder preparation chamber. The four pig's bladders have been sitting in this bucket for about two and a half days now in a salt water and antibacterial solution. Hello and welcome to pig's bladder preparation phase two. The bladders are in the sink, I've rinsed them out a little bit. They don't smell that bad actually. They're still pretty gross though, They're squishy. Cool, science. To inflate, have this pen, pen part out. There we go. <laughs> weird. You can see it's starting to stretch out a bit. It's not quite returning to its full shape, not incredibly elastic. It looks like a lot of plastic deformation going on. Ah, it worked! Yes! So I think I'm gonna blow this one up a little bit more. Use this for testing with plus static compression. <laughs> Just started sewing the carcass again. Slip the bladder in, then stitch the rest of it up, then inflate it. All right, I have put the pig bladder inside of the football now. It took quite a bit of time. And it's still not completely full, but I, I just didn't feel I was gonna get the bladder any larger. It's quite full in, in this direction. Maybe that's just the way it was. So I'm just gonna trim off this extra kind of tube bit and uh, carry on with the testing. To evaluate the new old ball, I used the basic test protocol from FIFA with some modifications, beginning with the tests least likely to break it. All of the shape measurements were done virtually with a point cloud from a phase vision 3D scan. Weight, easy. For the two meter drop test, I used a vacuum aided drop rig and bounced the ball at a variety of orientations. sometimes in slow motion. The water absorption test involves squishing a ball lightly in a shallow bath and measuring the weight increase. The air pressure retention test typically requires a pressure gauge, but because the pig bladder doesn't have a standard valve, I measured pressure indirectly with force from the load cell and contact area. To measure contact area, I sealed a viscous brown fluid, barbecue sauce, in a plastic bag and measured the displaced area. This method worked consistently on a normal football, so it was probably okay for the pig bladder. Finally, I kicked it with a robot until it exploded. So when compared to a modern World Cup football, the 16th century reproduction was smaller, lighter, less round, it absorbed more water, it didn't bounce as high, it bounced much more inconsistently, and none of that's really a surprise just looking at it. It was light, bouncy, kind of unpredictable, very lively in the hand, and just kind of fun to chase around the lab. It was nice to think of, think of how that would have been 450 years ago. They didn't have balls or balloons or other things that bounced. I mean, the people in the castle are the same stoic, regal looking people uh, in portrait paintings we see in museums. And, but to imagine them chasing this ball around the castle, it's just 
just kind of a funny thought. And it's nice to see that connection between the past and the present through this object, through the football. Looking at it through science, uh, history and sport, just how we can relate to the, the people of the past and almost get uh, a view into what their lives would have been like. Thanks for watching.